Hi, my name is Yona. I'm the after school leader at Field Teen Center, and today I'm going to be talking about Darling, which is Kay Ingram's dark retelling of Peter Pan. I read it as an ebook on the Libby app right on my phone, and I blew through it in about a day and a half because I couldn't put it down. In case you weren't aware, the story of Peter Pan is much older than the Disney version you might be most familiar with, and if you haven't read the novella by J.M. Barry, Yet, I highly recommend it because it's cute and charming, it's short, and it has some interesting things to say about childhood and growing up and the role of mothers in our lives and a little touch of what it means and what it looks like when you have a crush on somebody unattainable. And of course, Peter Pan is the epitome of someone unattainable because he's this fae trickster and this literal embodiment of the spirit of childhood. He will never ever grow up so all of the people who encounter him will always inevitably outgrow him and move on to other things in their lives. In Kate Ankrum's version of the story we see a lot of the same beats that are in both the movie and the book so a lot of this will be familiar but she puts a twist on it where the original version is exploring growing up and innocence, Kay Ankrum's version of the story asks, what happens when somebody fails or refuses to grow up? And the picture she paints of Peter Pan shows us how dangerous it can be when men refuse to grow up. Kay Ankrum's version of Peter Pan is not just a bad boy, but a bad guy. And so she's unpacking for us the trope of the bad boy, why do we like these guys, and what happens when they come into our lives, and what is the difference between a bad boy who's a good guy and a bad guy. So let's get into it. Wendy Darling and her family have just moved to Chicago. For her, it's a brand new city. For her parents, it's sort of a homecoming. So while she is very excited to explore and get to know this new city, meet some of her online friends who live in the city, her parents are a little worried about her safety. And after a little fight, they leave her grounded in her room and go off to a party without her. So this means she's alone in the house and a boy comes in through her broken window. When he invites her out for a party, she says yes, because she's ready to have an adventure. She bites off way more than she can chew though, and this story very quickly becomes sort of like a mystery thriller situation. There's something off about Peter Pan. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it's a pretty satisfying twist. I thought it was really worth reading. Um, I found it really unsettling, but also very enticing. Darling features a lot of the same characters that you'll recognize from the movie and the book, but with a little twist. Tinkerbell is still here. We've got some lost boys. We've got mermaids in the form of drag queens at a restaurant. Captain Hook has been turned into Detective Hook, and he's followed by the crocodile, who is a bounty hunter Peter Pan pays off to keep Hook out of their hair. And the tribe of Indians that's in the movie and the book has been replaced with a football team featuring a single female member who is a Minotago, who is the replacement for the character you would probably recognize as Tiger Lily. And something that I find really fun about the way Ankrum handles these characters is not just that they're put into this more realistic setting. For example, the switch from Captain Hook to Detective Hook but she's saying something new about these characters. In particular, I think that the move away from the Indian tribe to this football team instead makes a lot of sense. The version that's in the movie is really painful to rewatch. And this is definitely not a Native American story told by a Native American writer, but we're getting some authentic names. We are getting away from some of the stereotypes that are in the original version of the Peter Pan story. And Aminatago is one of my favorite characters in this version of the story. Something else we get in this remix is a chance for characters who are very one-sided in the original to show us some other sides of themselves. I think Tinkerbell is the biggest example for me. In the movie and the book, she's mostly an antagonist to Wendy. She's on the side of Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, but she's very jealous and she and Wendy don't really ever become friends. Uh, they might fight against the pirates together, but they're not hanging out beyond that. And in Kate Ankrum's version of the story, 
Wendy and Ominotago and Tinkerbell definitely have a friendship by the end. And I really appreciated how this story about sort of predatory men allowed space for female friendships. There is also definitely a lot of queer representation happening here. We've got a character who identifies as ace in the story. We've got some queer femme relationships and they're explored in enough depth that I think readers who are looking for that kind of content will find enough to satisfy them. I also especially enjoyed the drag scene. In Darling, the Mermaid Lagoon is not a literal lagoon full of literal mermaids as it is in the Peter Pan movie and J.M. Barry's book. Instead, it's a restaurant in which all of the wait staff and the performers are all drag queens and the wait staff are all dressed as mermaids, which I thought was really fun. We also get this really great scene where the drag queens are getting dressed. Uh, they're kind of taking care of Wendy. We get to see the difference in how Wendy interacts with them and how Peter interacts with them. And they give some really nice advice and it was just a really fun scene that I liked. I think that Kay Ankrum's version of Peter Pan is really unsettling in a way that I didn't expect, but really enjoy. He has this almost supernatural magnetism and it makes him feel dangerous, even when he's just kind of hanging out, chilling with the group. And it's a pretty important part of the story because a few characters here are not quite what they seem. Tinkerbell ends up being able to be a little softer than she appears at first and Peter is a different thing entirely. If this book was on your radar because of The Wicker King, Ankrum's first novel, uh, you might wanna meter your expectations. I think both are good. In fact, I think I enjoyed Darling more than I liked The Wicker King, but they're pretty different experiences. They do both feature queer relationships and this very dark, lyrical, lush style that I think is pretty standard for Kay Ankrum but where The Wicker King focuses really closely on the relationship between these two boys and maybe one or two other friends in their orbit, Darling has a big cast to navigate because it's an adaptation of Peter Pan, which has a lot of characters. And it's also got really more of a thriller angle. Like I said, um, there's sort of like a cops and robbers element happening, which makes sense because that's sort of the game that Peter and the pirates are playing in the original. So I think that you should come to this story expecting something very different from other work by this author. But I do think it's a good story of its own merit. This is one of my favorite stories that I've read this year. I hope you'll check it out. I hope you enjoy it. We would love to hear from you either about this book and who your favorite character was, or just to say hi, or to get a book recommendation, anything like that. You can visit us at Field Teen Center, which is at Parkway Central Library, 1901 Vine Street. We're open Monday through Friday, one to five. It's possible that our hours will change at a future time. So keep your eyes on this space and on our Instagram for changes to those hours. In the meantime, if you would like to get in touch with us virtually, you can DM us on Instagram Instagram, or you can always email us. We would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.